So starting really basic, the Outlook plugin is a package that's installed on someone's computer to add functionality to Outlook. Specifically, the Sugar plugin for Outlook adds functionality in Outlook to let you communicate information with Sugar from Outlook. Specifically, you can synchronize contacts, meetings, calls, and tasks, create new Sugar records, archive emails from Outlook into Sugar to become part of a contact or account history, and uh, use a sidebar that Justin will be showing you a little bit further on in the demo. If you're ever looking for more information about the Outlook plugin or really anything that Sugar creates, Sugar has got a ton of documentation on their support page. Uh, we've got the link here directly to the documentation about the Outlook plugin, but really anything that you're looking for more information about from Sugar, there's going to be document documentation about that out on their site. So currently, the latest version of the Outlook plugin is version 2.3.0. Uh, this was released oh, maybe a month ago, is going to be my rough estimate based off my memory, and supports Outlook 2010, 2013, and Office 365, which is also Outlook 2016, um, 32 or 64-bit versions of Outlook. It does have some requirements like .NET Framework 4.5 or higher and Visual Studio tools. Uh, and it also requires Sugar 7 dot something. So anything, any version of Sugar 7 will work with this version of the plugin. Um, according to Sugar's notes, it will work on all versions of Windows from XP Service Pack 3 and up. Although if you're on Windows XP, I wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're going to say this a couple times, but when you are upgrading the Outlook plugin, always make sure you uninstall the old version first so that you get the old code out before you put the new code in. If you are wondering, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. If you are wondering what version of the Outlook plugin you have installed, if you're not sure what version you have right now, you can find out in Outlook by going to the Add-ins tab in your Outlook and looking for an icon that says About the Sugar CRM plugin. Uh, once you click that within the pop-up window, you can kind of see on the bottom half of the screenshot here, uh, Sugar plugin for Microsoft Outlook version 2.3.0 in our particular example. If you don't have those buttons in a ribbon, you're probably using a very old version of the Outlook plugin. Or you don't have it installed at all. Okay. How do you download the Outlook plugin? You can find it in your user profile. Uh, to get to your user profile, you just click on your little user icon in the upper right corner of Sugar CRM. Click on that drop down, click on profile and then make sure you're clicking on the Downloads tab. One of the nice things about the newer versions of the Outlook plugin is it comes with a single installer for all of the different versions of Outlook as well as 32 and 64-bit. You used to have to determine what version of Outlook you had installed as well as if you were using 32 or 64-bit, but now it does all of that for you. That brings us to our demonstration where I will be showing you the Outlook plugin. We'll take a quick look at all of the different configuration options, take a look at the sidebar, archiving email, and then syncing contacts, calendars, and tasks. So with that, let me bring up, I have a sugar here, and my Outlook. So the first thing I wanted to show is the configuration. If I come up here to my ribbons and come to my add-on, you'll notice I have those Sugar plugins. I can get right to the plugin help from here. I can get to that about screen from here so I can see what version I'm on. In my case, 2.3.0, which is the most recent version. I can click on the Sugar Serum plugin settings icon here, which takes me to a plethora of options. The most important being, of course, your connection. In my case, I am connected to demo.techedv.com and logged in as the user Lee Hogan. There are a lot of different options for configuring how the system is going to work. The first one being the archived email attachment option. This one's pretty important. You always want to send email attachments to Sugar. If you're emailing around 
10 megabyte PowerPoint presentations or CAD files, you may not want to store all of those in Sugar, or you might. So you could prompt or never add attachments to Sugar. And then there's just a lot of different preferences. These are generic preferences. If you want to enable auto, auto archiving, checking the auto archive checkbox by default, which we'll look at in a minute. And I would suggest reading through this. There's a lot of things that are very useful, and everyone kind of has a different setup. One of the things I'd like to call out is this automatically sync every X minutes. This will automatically synchronize your contacts, calendar, and tasks every X minutes. Otherwise, you have to actually click the button. And I'll show you clicking the button a little later on. I don't want to have to wait 20 minutes to show you a syncing. Each of the different items you're going to be syncing has its own tab. Contacts, where do you want them to sync? In my case, my contacts folder. Do you want to auto-sync contacts or not? Sending attachments. When I'm creating a new contact in Outlook, do I want to mark it to automatically sync to Sugar? Yes or no? And of course, you're probably going to want to filter for duplicate contacts. Then you can choose the sync directions, whether you're syncing both ways, one way Sugar to Outlook or one way Outlook to Sugar. Uh, this is kind of personal preference, and you may want to play around with how it works. And of course, who wins? Does Sugar win? Does Outlook win? Or does it ask the user? And we have similar items for appointments, tasks. And then further on, we have some items for the side panel, which you can see over here. Currently looking at the contact Aaron Hoekstra in my system. Do you want to enable that or not? What kind of cache do you have? So every 15 minutes, if I were to go in here and make a change to Aaron, it's not going to see that change in Outlook for 15 minutes. And then which modules do you want displayed? If you're not using cases, for example, you could uncheck that, and it's not going to show up in your side panel. Sugar does have some functionality for different languages. And then logging and advanced, you probably don't want to get into unless you're working with Sugar support or us to help you debug what's going on. first thing I did want to show you is the sidebar over here. I have selected an email from Aaron Hoekstra talking about doing some coding in Starfish. You can see here it found Aaron Hoekstra based on his email address. It's searching based specifically on that email address. If there were multiple people on this email, it would let me choose which one I want to look at. I could select from a drop-down whether I'm looking at Aaron or someone else it was sent to or from. I can see the phone number, the address, and if I click on these, it's going to open up that record. In my case, I'm opening up a map to our office. If I come back to Outlook, I can jump directly to Aaron Hoekstra, the contact. There's that map. go ahead and jump to our account as well. So those are both loading at the same time. And you can see here it's taking me to the contact. This is going to bring up Aaron Hoekstra. And of course I have the account opening as well. I can see records that are related to the current record I'm looking at, whether it's meetings, to generate and present a proposal, phone calls, confirm the opportunity, notes, new note and sugar. This is the best note ever. I don't have any cases or tasks or opportunities. The sidebar is one of my favorite features in Outlook for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a recognition by Sugar of the fact that we all spend a lot of our day in Outlook answering and responding to emails. And so it's a quick way of taking all of the data that I have in Sugar and just putting that at my fingertips when I'm working Outlook. So if I get an email from someone who maybe I haven't heard from in six months, it's a quick reminder of what's the context for this person? What did we talk about six months ago? Or what opportunities might still be open with this person? What's that history that maybe I don't remember off the top of my head? The other thing I think Justin's about to show you um, is that the Outlook sidebar makes it really obvious if a contact is not in Sugar yet. This is actually my favorite thing personally. I'm not 
the best person about putting my contacts in sugar because I'm not in sales, and so I don't spend a lot of time in the CRM system other than when I'm, you know, helping people use CRM. So this is a quick reminder to me that this is a contact I have not created in sugar yet, and it just makes it really easy by clicking that button to quickly add that contact. Um, you'll see from what Justin's showing you now that it's a, it's a pretty basic form to add a contact. And so the process that I use is I fill that form out, I create the contact. Once that was, would be done, the contact sidebar would then refresh with a link to that contact, and I can go open it up in Sugar and add additional details. One thing I like to make sure I fill out is the account field here. If I click select here, I can search every account in the database, whether it's only my items or all items, and add that person to a specific account. It even is asking me if I want to copy the address and phone number from the selected account to the new contact, yes or no. I can go and add that person. I'm not sure if you saw that quickly jump up, but there was a duplicate check item there. And now in the lower right corner, we can see it's archiving the email. Looks like I may have lost connection to my internet again because it says it did not create that contact. But that's okay. We already have Aaron over here who is in Sugar. Some of the other buttons on the screen I wanted to show you were up here we have an Archive to Sugar button. If I click this, it's simply going to save this record into Sugar. I can search all of the different modules in the system. And right now it's searching for this person's email address. But if I want to type, for example, a case subject in here, it would also search for cases based on anything I put in there or account name. If I type in technology here, it's going to search for records that have technology somewhere in them. Uh, guys, we have a question. Are required fields enforced when creating contacts from the plugin? No, they are not enforced. You'll, in fact, you only have the options to fill in the fields that you saw on the screen there. So well, if you had other fields not on that screen that were required, that would definitely not be enforced or even available for the user to add. Yep. And again, that's why I've sort of created the process for myself at least where after I put that contact in, I go click on their link and open that up in Sugar and add the additional details. So I searched for technology here. Not only did it find these two accounts, but I can traverse these relationships to get to sub-records on here, if there's any accounts or contacts or opportunities. For example, I could record this message to a opportunity if I wanted to archive it. And finally, I have this automatically archive future emails in this conversation checkbox, which can be very useful. And we saw a checkbox in the options to automatically check this when you're doing this item. Alternatively, if I find that I don't have what I want in here, I can click the Create button and create a new account, bug, case, contact, lead, or opportunity. So I can do all of that from there. Or I can click this New Sugar Record and get to those same options here. So if this is a case, I could say this is a new case. It's forcing me to select an account. So I could say I need to attach this case to a specific account. Let's just go with Technology Advisors. How do you move to the mailboxes? And I've got all the code here I need. So I could then archive this email and again archive future emails in this conversation. Once I've archived this email, I get a category here of Sugar CRM. Random fact, that category might be a different color based on whatever Outlook magically picks for you. My Sugar CRM category is a pretty teal while Justin's is a in my opinion, ugly orange. <laughs> the other thing I can do with emails within Sugar is clicking on new email. Gives me some similar buttons. I can look up a Sugar address if I don't know someone's address and I want to look it up without having to go into Sugar. I can search for specific people here. Let's see if we can find Aaron in there. And we did find 
a lead and a contact. I can add one of those to the two field and one of those to the CC field and even re-add them to the BCC field just to make sure he gets the email. If I click OK, it's going to populate all of those for me. Type in my subject and that. And I could send an archive. I don't think Aaron actually wants to get email, so I'll just put myself in there. If I click send an archive, it's going to prompt me to fill figure out where I want to put that. And I think I'm in there. Yeah, I'm in there a few times. I'll just add myself to one of these contacts. And again, I get that automatic the archive future emails in this conversation. I can edit the email for what I want to put in there. I can get rid of signatures if I didn't want all that junk in there. I just archive it. Now, if I come to my cases here in Sugar, you can see that this case was just created by me on the 20th. How did you loop through the mailboxes? Excellent question, Justin. This is how you do it. No questions about any of that yet? Okay. Uh, the next item on our list was actually thinking, contacts, calendars, and tasks. So thinking, contacts, calendars, and tasks is pretty much what it sounds like. It's the ability to sync data back and forth between Outlook and Sugar. I'm going to go back into the, some of the settings that Justin was showing you earlier because I think they provide a good framework for talking about the options you have around syncing. So the first important thing to keep in mind with syncing is there are separate, separate settings for contact, appointments, or calendar, and tasks. And so you can choose to sync one of these three things, two of them, or all three of them, depending on what makes sense for you. Each one has its own set of settings. Within the settings, there's a couple of really important things that you need to pay attention to if you're going to sync any data. The first one is your sync direction. So you can sync the data both ways, meaning from Outlook to Sugar and from Sugar back to Outlook, or one way Sugar to Outlook, or one way Outlook to Sugar. Most often we see people at least start with a one-way sync, make sure everything's working the way they want it to, and then sometimes people move on to a two-way sync. Other times people will just stay with a one-directional sync. Um, anytime you do a two-way sync, you're opening up a little bit of risk in terms of duplication of data. We have a question here. Um, does the side panel try to match only on the email address on the contact? Can it look anywhere else like an email field on an account? It certainly looks at leads. In fact, if we click over here on similar records, you can see I have a contact and a lead here for Aaron in the system. But at this point in time, it does not look at the account email address field, just a contact or a lead. Okay, so getting back into our sync settings, again, that first important setting is what direction you're going to sync. The other really important setting, Justin pointed this one out, is the auto sync contact. And that goes along with this automatically sync every X minutes setting on the general tab of your settings. If you're going to sync information between Outlook and Sugar, you're going to want that syncing to happen automatically. Because otherwise, it's only going to sync when you click a button and that data is going to get out of date very quickly. And so if you are going to use automatic syncing, or if you're going to use syncing period, you're going to want this automatically sync setting turned on. And then whichever of these three types of syncing you want to do, you're going to want to turn on the auto sync for that type. There were, in previous versions of the plugin, some issues with performance around automatic syncing. Those have at least theoretically been fixed in this version of the plugin. And I have had at least a couple of customers confirm with me that they have seen that improvement happen. So if you had previous problems with performance and syncing, after you update to version 2.3.0 of the Outlook plugin, you may want to try that again because it should be resolved in this version. A few other things that are relevant around syncing. Um, first of all, what we see most commonly is we see people syncing contacts from Sugar to Outlook 
And the reason for that is you want sugar to be your main corporate contact database. That's part of the point of having a CRM system is to have all of your contact information up to date and correct in sugar. And so putting that sync direction from sugar to Outlook does encourage that behavior of making sugar the primary owner of that information. If you are syncing contacts from sugar to Outlook or two directions, it's important to know that there is a setting in sugar that determines which contacts you're syncing. It's not going to automatically sync all of your contacts from sugar because you probably don't want all of your contacts syncing. Oh good, you didn't hide that field. Hmm. There is a sync to mail client field that's on the contact screen by default. It's possible your sugar administrator has at some point removed that field if you don't see it. You need to go back into studio to re-add that field to your layout if that's the case for you. And the sync to mail client field is a very special field because it is actually, actually storing a unique value for every user. So I could choose to mark a contact for syncing to mail client, and Justin could choose not to mark that contact to sync to mail client. And it's actually storing those separate values, one per user, within the database. And so what that's doing then is allowing me as a user to select, out of all of the contacts that are in my company sugar database, which ones do I want to sync to Outlook? Now, I don't necessarily have to go through them all one by one. I can use the mass update tool to mark which ones I want to sync by selecting them from a list view, maybe after doing a, some sort of search or filter, and then doing a mass update here and setting the sync to mail client setting to yes if I want those to sync. And I would just click the update button to actually make that change happen. For appointment syncing, I actually see about 50% of the people I work with doing the same thing, syncing Sugar to Outlook, making Sugar the main source of that information, while the other 50% sync appointments from Outlook to Sugar. And the reason for that is that Outlook really probably has better scheduling functionality than Sugar does. Outlook is designed to be a calendar or an email application. Sugar is designed to be a CRM application. And so Outlook's really got nicer calendar and scheduling features than Sugar does. Sugar's doing their best to keep up, but Outlook's designed to do it. If you were going to sync Sugar to Outlook, that one's easier, so I'll do that one first. If you were syncing Sugar to Outlook, any meetings that you put into your Sugar calendar would automatically sync to your Outlook calendar. There is a setting that would determine whether calls that you put onto your Sugar calendar would also sync to your Outlook calendar. So some people choose to sync both calls and meetings. Others say calls are not that important to me. I don't want those on my Outlook calendar. I just want meetings on my Outlook calendar. If you were syncing the other direction from Outlook to Sugar, a very important setting is this one two up from the bottom here, mark appointments to sync upon save. Justin briefly mentioned that one earlier as well. Basically what this setting is asking you is when you create a new thing in Outlook, do you automatically want that one to sync over to Sugar or do you want to have control over it? Basically it's a do you want to sync everything from Outlook to Sugar or do you want to have some options around which appointments or which contacts are syncing from Outlook to Sugar? Most people I see leave that unchecked because they want to have that ability to pick which things to sync to Sugar versus which ones not to. If you were only scheduling relevant appointments on your Outlook calendar, if you never put anything private on there, anything personal on your Outlook calendar, it might make sense to mark that box then and just have it automatically sync everything. But I think most of us know we don't quite have that much separation between our work and our outside work lives, and we tend to use our Outlook calendars for everything. Um, and therefore, you may not want your doctor's appointment syncing over to your corporate Sugar database. And tasks have pretty similar settings. Honestly, I don't see that many people syncing tasks between Outlook and Sugar. Primarily, I think because most people don't actually use Outlook tasks very frequently. Um, but if you are an Outlook tasks user, again, you have the same options here, syncing one way, two ways, or both. And again, if you're going to sync from Outlook to Sugar, that mark task to sync upon save becomes relevant. Do you want all of them to sync automatically? Or do you just want them to sync the ones that you tell them to? I'm going to cancel out of here so I don't accidentally change any of Justin's settings on him. 
And there's a couple of other things I should point out around thinking, and then I'll turn it back over to Justin here to wrap up. Uh, the first one is that if you don't want to wait for the automatic sync, there is a manual button you can click here to do a sync right now. Again, if you're going to sync, I would definitely recommend turning on the automatic syncing, because otherwise your data is never going to stay up to date from the two systems. But sometimes you don't want to wait for that 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you have that set to. You don't want to wait for that interval. You just put something into Sugar and you want it in Outlook right now. You can always come in here and tell it to sync contacts, appointments, tasks, or all three according to your settings right now. And then one other thing I will show you is if you have an appointment that you want to mark for syncing, if you are not syncing them automatically, remember that setting, do I automatically mark my appointments to sync or not, you can mark something to sync or unmark something from syncing when you're working with the appointment on your Outlook calendar. The same would be true of contacts. If you were syncing contacts from Outlook to Sugar and you didn't have contacts marked for sync upon save, you would use a similar button in contacts to mark or unmark things as things that you want to sync between the two. One thing I just wanted to point out is you can right click on an event and mark it to sync as well or unmark to sync. And I, pr I like to go from Sugar to Outlook, specifically because if I create these records in Sugar and sync them to Sugar with the button up here, these buttons are also available in the ribbon, when I come over to my calendar, and jump to next week, I have these guys that went Outlook to Sugar, and this one went Sugar to Outlook. If I open up this record, Outlook to Sugar, it's not related to anything. And to me, that's not very useful just to dump a bunch of Outlook items into Sugar. I'd have to come in there and relate them to the correct contact or account or opportunity or whatever. Whereas if I create them in Sugar, I can have them associated with the correct contact. Well, I'm going to jump in there and contradict you a little bit. Part of the reason your Outlook to Sugar event wasn't linked to anybody is because you didn't invite anybody to that event. If you had invited that to a person by an email invite who is a contact in Sugar, it would get linked to that contact record. Okay. There you have it. Um, guys, just in regards to the, the synchronization that you've been talking about, um, one of the questions that we have here is, so, you know, you're talking about how some people prefer to sync one way versus another. Are there any best practices you recommend for deciphering which things you would want to sync one way versus which things you want to sync two way, or is it just kind of, you know, your own preferences? I would say in general, always start with a one-way sync before trying a two-way sync. Make sure the one-way sync isn't causing any problems before you introduce the potential for additional problems with a two-way sync. Um, not that it always causes problems or even frequently causes problems, but anytime you're integrating data between two systems, there's potential for things to go wrong. Other than that, I would say it just depends on how you're using them and what your users are used to doing. One of the other items, I'm not sure when this started, but you can archive emails to custom modules. And we've included the instructions here. And I believe we'll be sending out this PowerPoint to everybody. I was super excited to learn this recently because uh, we missed this fact until very recently. Like, like Justin said, we're not really sure when this got introduced. But um, it's actually remarkably easy to enable all you have to do is make sure that the module you want to archive things to has an activities relationship, meaning it has you know, emails and calls and tasks and things available to it. And that should push it out to Outlook as an option. It did very easily in my testing. So I was super impressed by that.
Well, yeah. We have had some new releases recently. On December 2nd, Sugar 7.8 was released, which included a lot of upgrades to the open source stack that resides under Sugar CRM. If you came to the sidecar user group we did last or previously, um, you would know all about that stack. So check that out. They've done a lot of really cool stuff there. The Outlook plugin was released November 20th, so you were correct. It was exactly, exactly a month, a month ago. Exactly a month ago. Am I good or am bug I good? Fixes, <laughs> uh, really good bug fixes and improved syncing options. There was a release of Sugar Mobile on November 4th with some bug fixes, and it, actually today the IBM Lotus Notes plugin was released, which includes a lot of similar functionality to the Outlook plugin. Another question that we have here, is there a size limit for email attachments synced to Sugar? I can't name an exact size limit off the top of my head. Um, my guess is if you had a really large file, it might time out before it sends the file to Sugar. But exactly what that timeout period is, I don't know. Sugar itself doesn't necessarily enforce any file size limits. It's just, again, potential timeouts with large files. All right, well, um, we'll give it another second or two here if there are any further questions that anyone has, or if you'd like to throw out any general sugar questions, um, you want to try and stump our experts, feel free. They love that. Um, but uh, while we're waiting, I just would like to say thank you for joining us. Um, it looks like we do have another question here. Is there a Gmail plugin? There is a very similar Gmail plugin. It's a third-party plugin done by a group called CollabSpot. We can include a link to that in our emails that go out afterwards. Uh, it's pretty reasonably priced, and all of our customers who have it are very happy with it. So our next user group meeting is going to be early January. Um, and during that meeting, we're going to be talking about the Customer Journey plugin, which is one of Sugar's newest plugins and also pretty exciting um, the capabilities that it has um, I know our team's really excited about so um, we did do a, a webinar on that earlier in the year so if you are um, curious about it you can't wait you can uh, go on our YouTube channel and check it out from there otherwise we hope that uh, you will join us uh, on January 9th and that link will also be uh, emailed to you after this meeting. By the way, regarding that, if you have any suggestions, one of the things we're going to be doing during that user group in January is building a customer journey. So if you did perhaps see the webinar we did already and you have some thoughts about what a cool customer journey might be, we're looking to select, gather some suggestions from you. Um, so feel free to reach out to either Justin or myself or email Deneen. Uh, marketing at techadv.com with some thoughts that you have and maybe you'll get to see your customer journey built by us during that user group. All right, I think as long as there are no other questions, we are ready to wrap up today. Um, thank you, Justin and Megan, for showing us the Outlook plugin. Thank you. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.